Women's Training Ninja Warrior. Currently, she's the pre core and altitude training national master coach, making her an authority on peak performance. She's an international speaker, speaks at the largest fitness conferences in the world, and her experiences as an athlete, her educational portfolio, entrepreneurial ventures, and enthusiastic character have shaped her to become a formidable leader in the fitness area and as an international speaker. So if you could please make her welcome, the founder and CEO of Buzzbill, Megan Jarvis. Thank you. And thank you guys. Uh, I've brought a little banner here just so that I don't need to go through my credentials in, uh, in detail if you want to know what my past experiences are. They're right over here. And you're going to hear as we go, my journey throughout entrepreneurialism, fitness, and overall life, the lessons I've learned, what I think tonight would be really important to share with you guys in this limited amount of time that I get with you. Firstly, let me tell you that although this isn't the biggest stage that I've been able to speak on, it's one of my favorite because I've been able to speak on this stage before on the Gold Coast. I live in Southport now. I'm not American, I am Canadian. But I actually love speaking where I am, where I live, and how I can help those of you that I can actually connect with on a deeper level and make contact with you. So it's awesome that you guys are here tonight, and I hope we stay in touch afterwards. And if there's any questions, you'll have the Q and A. But you're also very much so can come up to me and ask me personally when we go into the food and beverages afterwards. All right, let's get ready to rock. So tonight, I'm going to give you the simplified steps on how to really take your startup, your business, or wherever you're at in your entrepreneurial uh, world to the next level. I'm going to start off by talking a bit about my background, and then I'm going in, into what, how, and where. This is something that I picked up from Gary Vanderchuk. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he's a very popular entrepreneur over in, the, over in America, and he pushes people outside of their comfort zone. That's Literally what he does, he makes you take that first step, but then he also shows you the distribution channels and how to make it work in the economy that we have today, which is mostly online. So I'm gonna take you from start to finish and what I've learned from him. I'm also gonna go over the three C's, courage, confidence, and connection. While we go through the slides tonight and presentation, I encourage you to get your phone out. I'm gonna be asking you guys some questions. There's one or two activities that I would actually like you to write down a few things because it's so important to action things while you're in the moment. Because I could give you a laundry list of things to do and at the end of the presentation, you'll go home and go, what, what was I supposed to do again for tomorrow? So we're gonna do them tonight in a moment. And then I'm gonna go into a little bit of focus and goal setting to set you guys up for the future. Raise your hand if you own your own business. Okay, I designed this for you guys. Awesome, that's perfect. Always important to go into the audience. All right, one second. I just want to go back to my background. Perfect. Okay, so firstly, this is not my brother. That, that is me growing up. I was a tomboy. I played hockey. Uh, my favorite sport was BMXing. I was a world championship BMXer at the age of 13. Moving forward from that before Ninja Warrior, I came here to play professional basketball. I love sports, and I love elite sports, but also ones that are a bit dangerous or risky. Those have been my favorite growing up and throughout the years, and most recently, uh, again, I like taking huge risks. In fitness, I had to do Ninja Warrior when it came out, so I recently was on that in the first season. I fell really bad into a big pool, and a lot of people got taken off in ambulances. I didn't, knock on wood. Uh, I, I hopefully will not in any upcoming seasons, but it is so exciting, and it's been a really cool component of what's made my entrepreneurial journey the way it is. Lastly, my education is in kinesiology, but I'm gonna give you my entrepreneurial background. At the age of 13, I was doing open houses for my dad. He runs a real estate company. I was just jumping in the deep end, taking over his position when he stepped out, and I absolutely loved it. 
Well, studying kinesiology, I decided it would be a good idea to also get my real estate license. And by the age of 16, I was selling multiple properties, and my mom was getting worried I wouldn't study, uh, follow through with my kinesiology degree because the money was really good. Fortunately, I've always followed my passion, my heart, and what I really wanted to strive for. And that's the first topic I'm going to talk about. And one of the things that we're going to do a, a little activity around tonight, and I know a lot of you already own your own businesses, but it's always good to come back to what you love. So the first thing with regards to love what you do, I say love what you do because if you own your own business, you know it is hard. It is very hard. And if you don't love it, you won't last. So loving what you do is not just a fluffy way of saying, find your passion, find your why. I say that because if you're going to go forward in business and start something new, if you're a startup looking for venture capitalist money, you need to love it. You need to want to get up in the morning and you, you're, you're gonna be your only motivation. So how do we know we love what we do? How do we find our passion? Well, the best way, and the, the way that I always explain it, and there's a few other people that explain it this way now, Tony Robbins being one of them, is where is your energy? What wakes you up in the morning? What inspires you to get out of bed? What, what really it comes back to is tuning into yourself and your own energy. I like to bring up the example of going back into your childhood because that's really easy. As you can see, I love being a tomboy, I didn't care what anyone thought, and I love BMXA. There was no judgment there, but now we get all these environmental factors coming in, and it's going to be difficult for you to decide, is this you know, my partner's love, is this my love, is it my mom that loves this? So really find what you tune into, where your energy is at, is Writing down one thing right now, if you have a phone or a piece of paper, there should be some in front of you. I'll have you write down what wakes you up in the morning and what is one thing that you know 100% you absolutely love. I'm not saying you have to make a living from this, but what is one thing that you absolutely love? Is it wakeboarding? Is it uh, seeing your kids? Because having that one thing and knowing that that is energy towards something you love will help you find the next thing towards business and ensure you're on your right path and you're following your heart with what you love. So tune into your own energy. And throughout this presentation, I'm gonna be really quick with regards to be deliberate about your time. Who here has too much time? Anybody have too much time? Yep, too much time, that's amazing. I, you look like somebody that could say that to me, so I, I believe you. But who here wants more time? Right, so we all want more time. The first thing is, when it comes to time, we actually get to decide where we put our time, and we will make up every excuse in the book that we are too busy for what we love. And you will do, it's really interesting, you have the same triggers that go around, and all of us will have one thing that is blocking us, from taking that next step and creating more time for ourselves. So busyness is an excuse. It actually keeps us safe, which is the main thing that our brain is trying to do at all times. So for you to step into what you love, you need to snap out of your brain keeping you safe and take that step towards something that is scary and it's pushing you out of your comfort zone and you know, it's gonna get, it's actually going to assist you in putting your time where you really truly want it. The next thing is how. Your mode of communication and content and how you're getting your actual message out there. So with Love What You Do, I'm gonna go back to what you're doing right now for the next two points. So with your business right now, I'd like you to write out just what your business is. Just a few, a few words, what do you do right now? What's your business? and I hope it's something that you love. And the next thing I'd like you to do is write up the number one way you are communicating what you do right now to people. How are you communicating what your business is? Now, there's a few ways of communicating. 
And the best way is to communicate with what you're good at. Raise your hand if you like writing, if you're a writer. Awesome, we've got a few writers in the house. Raise your hands if you like photography. Great, what about video? You like to get online, you like to do Facebook feeds. Awesome. All of us, so there were hands getting raised from different parts of, parts of this uh, auditorium as we went. All of us have a different thing we're good at and a different thing we love. And the how is going to be what you're good at. So if you're a good writer and you love writing, you should be blogging, you should be getting out there and doing a lot of posts with your writing and your content in them. If you like photos, you should be taking photos everywhere you go. And that's going to be the thing that you're getting your message out with. Now, the where, your distribution channels, I know that we have a few speakers that, or the other two speakers will probably touch on this slightly as well, but right now, we have very limited distribution channels. Because everybody's attention is where? Right there, we've got one, right there, we've got another. There's one on your lap, you're holding it. It's online and it's on your phone. We very rarely watch TV anymore. If it's anything, we watch Netflix. And even when we're watching Netflix, if you look at your partner, they're probably scrolling on their phone. So we know where everyone's attention is. It's not a secret anymore. Our attention is in this technology right now. So how we're going to get our business out to the world and how we're going to distribute it is going to be what we love, what we're good at, and then the where is going to be online or within something in the phone. You've got a few big channels, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn if it's B2B, business to business, Snapchat is a great one if you're targeting younger people. Depending on what your business is, is going to depend on how you communicate your message. And all of those channels can be extremely effective knowing where your target market sits. So that's your what, how, and where when it comes to your business. The three C's, courage, confidence, and connection. These are my favorite topics. I could talk on this usually for three hours, but I'm going to put it into five minutes, and I promise I won't talk too quickly. Firstly, when it comes to courage. We will never feel comfortable stepping outside of our comfort zone. I just, I, I recently just spoke in Sydney to over 200 people. I was in the corner shaking. I love getting on stage. It's my passion. It wakes me up in the morning, but it still scares me. I can still come up with all the excuses in the book why not to get on that stage. My hair doesn't look good. I feel fat today. I will put everything out there to try not to, but I know that I need to push through and actually take that step to get on the stage right now. When it's scary, when you're getting pushed out of your comfort zone, that's when the courage is going to kick in. And I've got a couple tips when it comes to courage in a moment. When it comes to courage, that's going to equal confidence. When you take that first step, even if you fail, if you get back up, this is going to create confidence in what you're doing. And lastly, connection. It is one of the most important components of being a business owner, of somebody in the startup space, or an entrepreneur. And this kind of connection is never going to go away. Although you might see a hologram of me like Tupac later on, you will still want to see that person in the flesh because that is a basic human quality that we all crave. We crave connection. If we feel lonely, again, that's, a, that's our body telling us, we need to get out, we need to see some friends. Just like the basic need of hunger, or the basic need that I'm tired, I need to sleep. Connection is the same. They did a study in Harvard two years ago that actually showed, no matter which uh, industry you're in, whether it's an accountant, whether you're a lawyer, as they increase their workload, the most successful entrepreneurs increase their time with friends. They increased their time with people because they were able to talk things out, de-stress, which is, I know everyone in this room, if they've owned their own business, has felt that. And it allows them to actually get out what they're stressed about, and that is the opposite of what we want to do. We want to go in our room, eat ice cream, and chill, and just go into the zone. But I encourage you to create connection and get out and see people. What I'll have you do now is think of three
three people in your life, and you're going to write their names down for me, because you're going to do this tonight. These three people, when you're around them, you get energized. When you see them, they lift you up, and you might have some similarities or some things in common. And I'd like you to write down their three names right now for me. They can be family, friends, your partner. Well, hopefully one of them is your partner. I want you to, tomorrow, text message those three people. And I want you to set up either a call, a coffee date, a dinner, whatever it is. Because chances are, one, you might need to get some stress out that you guys didn't know was there. Or two, one of those three people actually need you. and the power of why. With regards to time, guys, do you mind just giving me a signal with time? Like five minutes? Yep, five? Okay. Firstly, when it comes to connection in business, when you are creating connection with someone, you want to ensure you have, number one, clear conviction. If you're talking about your company, you need to have an opening line that you go in confidently with every single time. I am the founder and CEO of Buzzfill. We let you train anytime, anywhere with no lock-in contracts and buy health and fitness professionals all the way from Byron Bay to the Sunshine Coast. We're in five different countries. I could go on, but you get the point there. So you want to be very clear in your conviction of what you do, what your business is. Because you don't, you'll never know when the opportunity is going to come about that you're talking to a venture capitalist or you're talking to someone who's going to say, I know how to take you to the next level. I, I think we could work together. So clear conviction is huge. Belief in your product. I think you guys already know that that's super important. I'm sure you do. That's again going back to loving what you do. And then lastly, partnerships and collaborations aligned with your true purpose. The last thing I'm going to have you do is in order to take the next step in your business, if there's one thing that you're lacking when it comes to what your business needs right now to take your next step, don't think of the goal way up here. Think of the building blocks or laying the bricks to get to that, that goal right now. Because if you think of the goal, you're going to get overwhelmed and stressed. I want you to think of the simple steps that you can take one a day, each day, to get to that, that, that goal at the end of the tunnel. List one thing, I just want you to write down one thing that you need right now to go like that. And take that next step. Get to that million mark. Get to that 10 million turnover. What is that one thing that you need right now? The next thing, quickly, because I know I'm running out of time, I'm going to have you write down what's one person, what's one profession that you need in your business right now. I know that if you own your own business, there's always one thing or one person or one element that you're probably saying, hmm, I could use a chartered accountant at the moment that knows ASIC better than the one that I'm working with. Or it could be I really need somebody to be a virtual assistant and get back to my Facebook messages because I'm very overwhelmed with how many responses I'm getting off my click on all. What is that one thing? All right, I'll we'll finish up. I uh, made a connection with Uber, and the way that I did that was making it relevant to Uber, finding a gap in the ease of use and missing in the marketplace, and the perfect fit. So that's a, a bit of a longer conversation, but just going into creating connections again. So focus, where energy goes, energy flows, and the results will show. Focus is extremely important when it comes to entrepreneurialism. I haven't met a single entre successful entrepreneur that is not focused. Focus on what you need to achieve, and what are you going to focus on is probably the biggest question you need to ask yourself. What does it mean, and what are you going to do when you know what you need to focus on? Last one is goal setting. And I'm just going to leave these up and have you guys 
If you want, take a picture. These are the three steps of goal setting that I highly suggest. So understanding your why, why do we set these goals? And the mind works best through creation rather than through consumption, which means we need to narrow our focus. That's the basic underlying principle. Designing the truth, so learning is not a spectator sport. You need to get out, you need to fail, you need to make a connection with people, and you need to step out of your comfort zone. And lastly, actioning the five-second rule. Your brain will try to keep you safe. We've already discussed that, and believe me, standing on the podium before I ran into Warrior, my brain was going, what the hell are you doing right now? But I five-second ruled it, when the buzzer went off, I went over those steps, and I didn't fall in right away like the guy before me did, which was also quite scary, because I thought I was gonna go in, because I saw him go, and you know the story. That is everything. Within almost a time limit, I hope. Thank you guys so much. Here are my details. The last thing I would love to leave you with is in this room right now, most likely that person that you wrote down that you're thinking you need for your business is sitting in here. And we get to have snacks and nibbles. I encourage you to go up, introduce yourself, and say what you're looking for because the only way you're going to find it is by asking. Thank you.